Hi class, this is Dr. Kaufman and I'm here creating this video to explain how deadlines and the late policy work in the master's and doctorate program here at Grand Canyon University for the counseling courses that I may be teaching you and other faculty will be teaching you over the next couple years, depending on how far you are in the program. And so this video is designed to clearly illustrate how assignments are going to be graded and a little bit of background as to why we have to do it this way and why especially in the online program but also in the courses that i teach on campus it's important to keep to this policy so let's go ahead and get started by reading the official late policy as written in the grand canyon university faculty handbook and student handbook and i'm going to actually read this slide because i think it's very important that we have the verbiage perfectly on the same page between you and between me. Late policy. All assignments are due before midnight Arizona time on the due dates indicated. Assignments posted after the indicated due dates will be subject to a deduction of 10% of the available points for each day late. No assignment can be accepted for grading after midnight on the final day of class. And of course, that's Arizona time. Technical issues are not valid excuses for late work unless the problem stems from GCU servers. Exceptions to this policy are at the discretion of the instructor. All right, so that is the verbatim listing for the GCU late policy. I'm a core faculty for the counseling department here at Grand Canyon University. And so I am required to follow that rule like it's law. I can't really make exceptions because one, I am teaching anywhere between seven and nine classes every week of the year. And that means I have between 80 and 100 plus students. And because if I don't receive the assignments on time, I cannot submit grades on time. And so you may think one student submitting late doesn't impact the other 8 or 12 or 15 students in the class, but it actually does. Because if I look at a class and only six people have turned in an assignment, I know that those assignments are coming in late. So to give students an extra chance to turn it in on time, I might skip to a different class. But if those late assignments never get turned in and that class does remain with only six students turning them in on time, a lot of students are gonna get zeros and those six students are going to get their grade later because I want to sit down and grade a full classroom worth of grades. If I'm going to sit down, I want to get the task done so I can move on to another task and get that task completely done. I really don't enjoy grading two students at a time and then that assignment spreading out over two weeks of my life and feeling like the class is not moving on. So sometimes one student can cause a ripple effect of all the classes feeling like they are a little bit behind. And when that happens, I, I have to follow this policy because that's the only way to incentivize everyone in the class working together to turn in their papers on time and I don't mean working together like group work because that would be academic dishonesty what I mean is you turning the paper in on time and the rest of your classmates turning things in on time results in me being able to deliver my feedback more on time and then the class feels like it's functioning properly so let's go to the next slide this is the equation for what will happen to your score based on the number of days late and it's a order of operations algebra equation. So your score that you would have earned, let's say it's a 90%, and then minus 10% for each day late. So if it was zero days late, if it was on time, you got 90% for the score you earned, minus 10 times zero, which is zero. 90 minus zero, so in the grade book, you get a 90. If you scored a 100 on that assignment, then you, you lost no points because everything you wrote was correct, and then it was not late. And so that's the best situation. So you want to get the score that you earned 
to be the one that goes in the grade book. That's how you get a good grade and that's how your GPA stays high. But we're going to have some examples that illustrate what can happen to people's grades when they start messing around with missing the due date. And so we're looking here on the calendar at a due date that is Wednesday. That is when all of our papers are due by midnight Arizona time. So this paper was turned in on time and it lost 15% based on its responses. So 100% is the best possible grade. It did lose 15% because of how it was completed. So there's no late deduction. So an 85% goes in the grade book. That student gets in the grade book the grade that they earned through their work. Now that same paper could be two days late. So let's look at this example. It's two days late, so the best possible grade is not 100% anymore. It's 80%. And the final score is the maximum score minus the points deducted. So if you lost 15% on that same paper, the maximum score minus the 15% of how well the paper was completed and that turns into a 65% going in the grade book. So this was a solid B paper if it would have been turned in on Wednesday, but it lost 20% for the late penalty and now it's a failed paper. 65% goes into the grade book as an F for that assignment, all over being two days late. So that's a huge penalty. It completely changes what you're experiencing as a student in the class. Now this is where it gets really dicey. That same paper that would have been a solid B in 85%, now the student says they were sick all weekend and they couldn't get to their computer and they forgot that they were behind in the class until Monday night and they turn it in a full week late, seven days late. So the maximum score for this paper is not even a passing grade anymore. The best this student can do is 30%. But remember, this would have been a solid B paper if it was turned in on time. So it's 30% minus the actual points lost, which is 15%. So now a 15% goes in the grade book, all because this paper was turned in a full week late. And there's still more examples here that are very important for everyone to understand. So the GCU late policy says you lose 10% for each day late. So now what happens if the paper is 10 days late? 100% minus 10% for each day late, 10 days late. The best possible grade is zero. You can't earn points on that. So I'm not gonna grade it because even if it's a perfect paper, you lose 100% of the points. So in the grade book, you get a zero. And that happens on Saturday, the weekend after the weekend that the assignment would have been due. So look at the calendar. There's a, That's the visual. So it's due on Wednesday. The weekend after happens. And then we get to the following weekend. There's no points left. It's over. And I can't bend that rule. That's something GCU expects me to follow as a core faculty in the counseling program. So if you wanna to try to earn 10% because you think your paper is an A-level effort, then you gotta turn it in quickly, close to that due date. Because Friday, the ninth day, is technically the last day the paper is even worth points. Because that Saturday, the 10th day, it's worth zero, even if it's perfect. All right, and that's the example for this calendar. Even if it's not a solid B paper and it's a perfect paper, perfect references, perfect synthesis of information, perfect thoroughness, richness of detail, fully supported by research articles, but it's 10 days late then you get a zero in the grade book because it's 10% for each day late. And then also, if the paper is turned in sometime after the 15th day, you see the lock on that 10th day. I can't unlock the assignment after that and I can't grade it after that. 
So again, even if it's a perfect paper, once we get past that 10th day, that's when the GCU late policy has expired on that assignment. So there's no conversation to be had. I've had many students reach out to me in week six or seven or eight and say, I didn't do the week two paper, here it is. And they include it as an attachment in the private message forum. And I look at that and I have the, that's a tough spot for me to be put in because I know the rules that I'm required to follow to keep my job at Grand Canyon University here in this counseling department is I can't unlock that to grade it because just like you have rules to turn things in on time and do things a certain way as a student, I have rules a certain way to have all grades turned in for certain assignments in certain time periods as well. And when I start unlocking things that should not be unlocked, my department chair and my assistant dean and my dean, they could get the perception that I'm not running my classes correctly. All because I'm a core faculty and I'm being asked to break the rules when really it was the responsibility of all my students to turn in the papers on the right day. And certainly, if it has to be late, it has to be turned in during the time that the GCU late policy covers. And then we get to the final week of the class. Now, there is no GCU late policy help for the last week of the class. So we see the deadline, the due date, that Wednesday, there's a lock on it, the class is over. Loud cloud locks up automatically once the course ends. That is not a button that I have to decide to press. That is automatic. The machines say this course is over and then say, Dr. Kaufman, what are the final grades for all these students? I can't accept anything by email, by individual or private message form. I cannot accept any assignments. And that also includes people trying to turn things in just before midnight. Remember, Grand Canyon University's counseling program has students in all 50 states. The entire country has students using LoudCloud at that moment between 11 and 12 Wednesday night trying to turn in assignments. And not just the ones in week eight, but seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All the students that waited until the last minute are turning things in during that last hour. The system can run slow. The system can be very frustrating at that time. You wanna plan ahead, especially on that last day of class and make sure all of your ducks are in a row and that your assignments turned in on time so that you're not cramming for the last minute. I highly recommend that all of you take the opportunity to do it that way. Because like I said, I can't accept assignments according to the rules I'm supposed to follow as your faculty member, core faculty in the counseling program. I am not supposed to allow papers to be graded that are not turned into LoudCloud and LoudCloud locks on that final minute of the course, the last day of the eighth week of the class. And with the time zone difference, it is your responsibility to know what time Phoenix, Arizona is operating on. I'm here in Phoenix. I moved to the university in order to teach online and on campus. And, you know, for those of you in my classroom classes, I hope you're enjoying it. For those of you in the online classes, I really hope I'm making the counseling content come alive and feel like something that you want to do as your professional career. And... I do my best to make my expectations clear to all of you alike, but I highly recommend you use your smartphones or your digital devices to have a world clock somewhere, an app or in your system tray where you can see all the time zones, Pacific time, Arizona time, mountain time, central time, eastern time. And the reason I want you to have both Arizona time and those other two West Coast times is because Arizona does not have a time change. We do not acknowledge daylight savings time. So when the whole country jumps an hour forward in the spring, Arizona stays the same. When the whole country jumps an hour backwards because of the fall, Arizona stays the same. And I have both examples. You see here on the left, Phoenix is the same as Los Angeles. And on the right, Phoenix is the same as Denver. 
So Arizona behaves like a Pacific time zone state for part of the year, spring until the fall. And it operates like a mountain time zone state from fall until the spring. And so if you are thinking that you're in the East Coast and you're three hours ahead of Phoenix, and so you are working until 3 a.m. your time to turn things in, and you turn it in at 2.57 your time on the final day of class, you're late and the class is locked and you get a zero on that final paper because Arizona is not three hours away from you. It was two and it locked up 50 plus minutes ago at midnight Arizona time. Don't get caught by that mistake. I've had students run into that problem and it's heartbreaking because the rules I'm expected to follow as your teacher and teaching here in the online program at the university and also on campus, I can't bend that rule. And if I do, it's not my choice, it's the department chair. And sometimes we can't do that because of the volume of late assignments that are coming in. Also, your computer having a technical issue, a router issue, a Wi-Fi issue, your data plan maxed out for the month. Remember what the GC late policy said about technical issues. They are not a bigger importance than the due date of your class. You want to plan ahead. I really recommend getting into the habit of getting your work done early in Wednesday so that if there is a problem, you can go to the library, you can go to Starbucks and use the Wi-Fi there. You can go over to, to a friend's house and you can make an accommodation for yourself to plan ahead and have that emergency plan for how do I turn in my papers on time and not get defeated by my own dysfunctional internet situation. That is your responsibility as part of an internet heavy academic program because even if you're on campus, you submit all of your assignments through LoudCloud, right? We don't print them out and hand them to me old school like when I was in graduate school. And the internet is not a reason, it's not an excuse that I can validate because the due dates are absolute based on how loud cloud is working. Now, that last part of the late policy where we're talking about how faculty can make exceptions, I already explained briefly that I can't make exceptions. I can go to my department chair and ask him if he would like to give me clearance to make an exception. And based on the volume of late assignments that week, sometimes that can be a yes. Sometimes that can be a no, and I have to do what my department chair instructs me to do. And also, I don't have to ask my department chair for that. If I'm looking at it and I don't see that this should have been turned in late because the expectations were clear, then you're going to get a zero or you're going to be subject to the late policy. And some teachers at GCU do not have the same core faculty situation in the counseling program as I have in some of the other instructors. And so they can be really flexible about due dates. But one of the accreditation standards for core faculty is that we utilize the rules of the university consistently. And so when you decide to turn things late um, into the loud cloud Dropbox and say, well, Hopefully my teacher will not penalize me. You are really banking on whether we are going to enforce a late penalty or not. And what I'm saying is the only way to completely avoid that problem is by turning in your assignments on time. If you do that, it doesn't matter what I believe about the late policy because you completed your work on time and you submitted it on time. So there's no penalty for you anyway. This is somewhat like Pascal's Wager, which is a philosophy principle about whether we should believe in God. It's something I learned about in my graduate school days and undergrad days, and I think it's a really neat decision-making model. If you want to look that up, please do. I'm not going to explain it on this video because we're just talking about late policy and how if you want to make sure you have no deduction, just turn in your assignment on time. And one last thing, class, something that students throughout the years of me teaching at GCU has brought to my attention is that procrastination is a big issue in college and in higher education for a lot of students. 
and understanding how it works is part of the solution. And so I know that I just shared this whole lecture about deadlines and how the late policy works and about how technology and time zones factor into all of that. If you would like to watch a video that was really important to me when I was a doc student trying to figure out how to complete my dissertation, this TED Talk changed all of that for me. And so if we are procrastinating and that's why deadlines are tough, then perhaps take an opportunity to go to YouTube or go to the TED Talk website, find this presentation and watch it. Learn about the instant gratification monkey and the panic monster and figure out what the difference are between set deadlines and the open-ended life deadlines. I really recommend that we take this opportunity to learn this about ourselves because as a counselor, when we're sitting face to face with other people, they're procrastinating on the goals in their lives as well. There are so many people I've taken the time during a therapy session to watch this video with and it fits our topic for today. So I just wanted to pass this on as one last thing to add to how I'm seeing the deadlines and how they impact you and how they impact me and how we create these courses at GCU together. So please, if you're interested in understanding how that works and how to overcome it, watch this TED Talk with an open mind to add some strategies to your own situation. And that concludes this video in my introduction to my graduate course lecture video series. I hope you found it useful and that you clearly understand how late work is going to be treated in my course as I teach you counseling content here at Grand Canyon University. Thank you everyone. I hope you have a great rest of your day.